Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Google Cloud Retail Summit. Today, on this conversation, we have the honor to be with Daniel Pataki, CTO of Kinstan, Matt Ward, Intel General Manager of Industries, and Andy Eisner, Global Director of Google Retail Industry Solutions. On this conversation, we're going to talk about the solutions that we have edged to cloud with retail. Thank you very much. Matt, would you like to kick us off? Yes, yeah, of course. And the first question to Andy. So how is Google helping retail today? Matt, we help retailers in a variety of ways. And we really look at it across three strategic pillars. The first is capturing digital and omnichannel growth. The second pillar is helping, helping them become a customer-centric, data-driven retailer. And the third way we do that is we help them to drive operational improvement. And we bring several solutions to market across those three pillars that uh, basically help them drive their business. When it comes to the conversation that we're going to have today, really when we think about um, helping them capture uh, omnichannel growth, really we help retailers in a, in a variety of ways. Uh, in some ways, they build their e-com sites on Google Cloud using Google technology. Other ways that we do that is we help them either with partners, usually in a headless fashion, through ISV partners. And then the third way is we offer fully function SaaS solutions through ISV partners like Kinsta that we're going to hear about a little bit today. Other ways that we're helping them is we provide uh, AI solutions, especially around product discovery. So when we think about the e-com space, whether that's recommendations AI or retail search or visual product search, as an example. Matt, how about uh, what does the retail business look like at Intel today? Well, firstly, thanks, Andy. That's a great update. Um, within Intel, we continue to try and sense and respond to the changing needs of the market, similar to how you described. Um, again, at Intel, we're continually seeking to understand enterprise architecture requirements, both pre and post pandemic. And there's been big changes, um, both pre and post, in terms of the way the consumer interacts, et cetera, um, walking through a store or the logistics and supply chain. And we, we seek to work with our partners to deliver best in class solutions that help to deliver value to that enterprise. We're also looking, you know, data points like 75% of the data predicted to be processed at the edge by 2025. That's a, that's a huge shift. And Intel is working to ensure that we continue to be at the forefront of that innovation around the storage and the processing of data, especially with the second and third generation in Xeon scalable processors. And so for the retail market, this could support industry needs such as the increased personalization of consumer experiences, as I said, the reduction in operational cost, and really trying to answer industry challenges that we see many of our customers facing today. And so whatever the opportunity, it's clear that there's consistent trends and technology requirements. And as our CEO describes, we have four superpowers that will be prominent in powering this digital disruption. Clouds, connectivity fueled by 5G, AI, and also the intelligent edge that's going to continue to drive rapid digital transformation in nearly every part of our lives. So we're hoping to help continue working with, with our great partners here today, as well as end customers, in really understanding those, those growing opportunities and positioning ourselves and our partners for growth. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate that. Hey, Daniel, why don't you tell us a little bit about what your company's doing to help retailers? First of all, thanks for having us here. Um, we're really happy to be a part of this event. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about how we help retail. Um, so I think by and large, the general needs of retail are much the same as any other industry. All our customers expect excellent customer support, speed, dependability, and everything they need to make their websites really fast and um, stable. Um, what we can do to meet and exceed these expectations is provide solutions such as server level caching, um, things like malware scanning, automated backups, just to name a few. And we have an excellent customer support team who really does care. Um, where retail is a lot different though, is that the impact of going with a less performant host is much more noticeable, it's much more direct, and it can be a lot more costly for a number of reasons. Uh, one of those reasons might be that we know that a one uh, second increase in site loading times can lead to a 7% decrease in conversions. There's also an SEO failure kind of problem here where we know that Google prefers fast sites. So if you're dropping the ball there, then you might be losing out on rankings to your competitors, which is not great. There is a user experience component as well. People don't really like waiting for sites to load. So if they have to, that might mean that you're looking at a higher cart abandonment rate. 
it might mean less referrals. And what all this culminates in is basically a lower return on investment. If you were spending a fortune on ads and your site is not performing, you might as well be shoveling a lot of that money out the window, unfortunately. Um, E-commerce sites and retail in general is um, highly dynamic and very demanding as a result. It generates a lot of data. A lot of that data is not cacheable, which means that this is a more computationally heavy workload. Fortunately, Kinsta is here to help utilizing Google's architecture with amazing technologies like Intel C2 processors and infusing them with their own know-how and technologies and support, we can make sure that any sort of retail operation is successful. Thanks, Daniel. It sounded like you started to go right to where my next question is going to be. So based on what you just told us, why did Kinsta decide to uh, go with Google Cloud? Oh, there we go. Right. So. Um, we made the decision in early 2016. Um, at the time, we were um, relying on multiple smaller providers. We weren't really happy with the uptime. We weren't really happy with the features on offer and the flexibility. So we made the decision in early 2016 to just make the jump and, um, and use Google Cloud exclusively. And I think that made us the first managed WordPress host to use Google Cloud exclusively. And we haven't looked back since. Um, there were a lot of reasons for our decision. I'll, I'll go into some of them. Um, there were definitely a lot. So. One of the big ones is just the size of the network. So GCP has one of the biggest networks in the world, and it's still growing with new data centers being opened all the time. This provides us with a unique benefit because we can allow our clients to choose data centers for each and every website that they have individually, which is great for site speed, but it's also extremely beneficial for data protection and data control. The other reason that we had was basically just expertise. So we've built a really successful business in a way where we made sure that our goals are aligned with our clients' goals. And we believe that the same sort of thing is happening at GCP. GCP and Google in general, we believe is built on the ability to create resilient and super speedy networks. And we thought we would benefit a lot from that experience and we have. The, the third one, which is a really big one for us is flexibility. So we are a technology company, which means we have a lot of developers and engineers to utilize the flexibility and technology that Google can provide us. So a part of that is being able to have a really flexible architecture. What I mean by that is we had the opportunity to test a lot of machines and we arrived at C2s being the best for our customer workloads. However, we have a lot of internal workloads that don't necessarily benefit from the high powered C2 cores. So we are free to continue to use N1s for those. Um, we also have a lot of development and testing machines where we can scale those back to even single core N1s or just use preemptible machines, which is even uh, more cost effective. What this means for us is that we can solve for speed when it comes to our clients and we can solve for efficiency when it comes to our internal workloads. And ultimately that gives us a lot of control over our architectural cost. And finally, the last thing um, in a similar vein kind of is just access to all the APIs that Google has to offer. As I said, we have a lot of engineers and developers. We are good at automating things and APIs give us a really good opportunity to do that. So that means that our teams can focus on what really matters is increasing our customer's experience. Great insight, Daniel. I have a question for you and to elaborate a little bit more on, on some of the comments you made. What results did you see when you switched from N1 to C2 Intel Processor Infra? Um, for that, I, I go back before the switch. So um, for us, it was very obvious that on paper, C2s are the best machine for us. They provide the best single core performance. I think uh, 3.8 gigahertz sustained turbo per core. And that is really important to us. Um, and this is because we run PHP uh, workloads. PHP has some multi-threading support, but predominantly, especially in networking environments, it's a single core process. So for us, having that single core performance is really, really important. However, um, computing is complex. We need to be able to translate that core performance into site speed, which is not necessarily that trivial or given. Um, but having tested these machines and having actually used them now for two years, it's really obvious that C2s really do give us the biggest bang for our buck when it comes to that performance. And the reason this is super important for retail is exactly that ability for these cores to just blaze to requests one after another because it provides two really big benefits. So one would be just better performance across the board, whether you're working in retail or not. Um, this means faster site, it, sites, it means uh, lower cart abandonment, higher conversion rates, and so on. 
this was so much so the case that our customers actually started mentioning this on in support conversations and even on social media, which was obviously amazing for us. Um, the second benefit that we see is that we have a lot of clients who run Super Bowl ads or participate in Shark Tank or you know, other shows like that. And these events provide tremendous pressure on websites. And with, with Intel C2 processors, Google's architecture, you know, and infusing them with our own know-how and all that, uh, we can make sure that all of these retail operations are successful and that the websites are extremely resilient even in these circumstances. Thanks, Daniel. Based on that excellent technical uh, answer, how did it help your business? Yeah, so the, I think I, I answered that a little bit during the questions. Um, there's the obvious direct benefit of just speedier sites and uh, you know clients being happier, writing nice things about us, which is really, really great. It's basically what we're here for. Um, but there is an indirect effect, though, which I think is even more important. So at, at our heart, Kinsta is all about customer experience and user experience through that. Um, when our customers thrive, we thrive. And it's, it really is as simple as that. And one of the ways to do that or one of the, along the path to doing that, um, it's really important for us to have a really supportive and uh, modern architecture that GCP can provide. And what GCP also brings to the table is the technologies like Intel's C2 processors. And by us investing in these technologies and the change management that's required to make them happen, we can not only increase our customers' experience, but we can show them how much their business means to us and how much we value it. And uh, this builds a lot of trust. It uh, results in the amazing relationships we have with our clients and uh, it strengthens our brand. And as a consequence, it kind of creates this positive feedback loop where we can help our clients be more successful. And through that, as a direct consequence, we're more successful and can grow as well. Well, hey, th this has been fantastic. And I appreciate Andy, Dan, uh, Daniel as well for sharing those stories. And you know, for anyone listening, if you'd like to learn more about Kinsta, Intel, and the Google, Google Cloud, click on the links below. And on behalf of all of us, appreciate you watching. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you.